there, my name is Olivia Leibowitz, I'm 17 years old and I am from Mackay. Uh, as an actor I have only ever done stage work, but I would love to see what it's like to work in film. Uh, in the future, I would like to see myself hopefully in stage productions or maybe even working in television series. I chose to audition for QUT because I really love the campus, but I um, also think that this course would be the best course for me to develop skills as well as put me on the right track to developing a career in the future. So thank you very much and I really hope you enjoy. My first piece will be Jill from Butterflies Are Free, written by Leonard Gersh. Thank you. I can't find it. I can't find anything in this mess. Oh, it's here somewhere. I found it. My secret box. I take it with me everywhere. I keep everything important to me. This is a piece of a moon or a star. I found it in the desert and showed it to a geologist who said he had never seen anything like it on Earth. One of my baby teeth. A little picture of me when I was in the Mikado in high school. My last will and testament. And the instructions for my funeral. My entire estate is to be divided equally among whoever are my four closest friends when I die. Names to be filled in later. But that's the point. It isn't morbid. Funerals don't have to be morbid. I want mine in a large church, but I want all the pews and seats removed and just lots of big cushions for people to lie on. And I don't want anyone dressed in black. They should all be in gay, bright colors and far out clothes. And they should all be drinking or smoking pot or whatever they like. I want Salvador Dali to paint the walls with lots of groovy pictures. And I want tons of flowers. Not formal wreaths. Just tons of wildflowers just strewn everywhere. Oh, yeah. And lots of butterflies. <laughs> I want music going all the time. And I want the Rolling Stones to sing, and Simon and Garfunkel, and the Doors, and the Vienna Boys Choir. And you. And you. Oh, yes. My eulogy is to be delivered by Sidney Poitier. Oh, I love his voice. And at the same time, I want Andre Previn playing Ave Maria on the organ. There's nothing morbid about that, is there? Here it is. A present for you. They're love beads. I wore them when I was a hippie. Well, you ought to wear beads if you're going to play the guitar. Donovan wore them, and Jimi Hendrix. Oh. And you'll need some kicky clothes, you know, wild. And your hair doesn't exactly blow my mind. I can fix it. I know I have a comb here. I used to hang around Sunset Strip and smoke pot and say things like, down with the fuzz and don't trust anyone over 30, the whole bit. And I just did it because everybody was doing it. I felt like I was losing my individuality, whatever that is. The main thing, of course, was to protest against my mother, but it didn't work. I mean, I walked in one day with my hair all long and stringy, wearing far out clothes and beads and sandals. She loved it. The next day, she had stringy hair and far out clothes and beads and sandals. Well, I mean, how can you protest against someone who's doing the same as you are, right? So I went the other way. And joined the Young Republicans for Ronald Reagan. Another mistake. There is no such thing as a Young Republican. You look terrific. No, no, it gives you... Charisma. It's like pizzazz. Star quality. It's better than talent. 
If you have charisma, you don't need anything else. Well, they'll line up for blocks just to see you. You're beautiful, you know? I mean, you're a beautiful person, inside as well as out. My second piece is Andromache from The Back Eye, and it's written by ancient Greek playwright Euripides. No, oh, darling child. Prized at too great a worth to live. You die at enemy hands and leave me desolate. Your noble father's greatness, which to other men brought hope and life and victory, will cost you your death. For you, his courage proved a fatal heritage. Oh, marriage bed, which welcomed me as Hector's bride. Ill-fated happiness! I thought then my son would be king over Asia's teeming multitudes. Not die by a Greek ritual of murder. Little one, you are crying. Do you understand? You tug at my dress, cling to my fingers, nestling like a bird under its mother's wing. No Hector will come to save your life now. Rise from the grave, gripping his famous spear. No army of your father's family. No charge of Phrygian fighters. You must leap from that sickening height and fall and break your neck and yield your breath with none to pity you. Oh dear child, so young in my arms, so precious. When you were newly born, I wrapped you up Gave you my breast, tended you day and night, worn out with weariness. For nothing. All for nothing. Say goodbye to me once more for the last time of all. Come close to me. Watch your arms around my neck. Put your lips to mine. Hellenists, inventors of barbaric cruelties. What has he done? Why will you kill this child? Helen, Tyndario's daughter. You were never a daughter of Zeus. You had many fathers. The avenging curse was one. Hate was the next. Then murder death, and every plague that this earth breeds. Oh, swear, Zeus never fathered you to fasten deaths on tens of thousands east and west. My curse on you. The beauty of your glance has brought this rich and noble country to a shameful end. Take him, you robbers! Throw him! Carry out your decree! Feast on his flesh! The great gods are destroying us and I am powerless to save my own son from death. Hide me. Fling my miserable body into your ship. I go to my princely marriage and leave behind me my dead child. 